We're down at uh, Burr Brothers Yacht Yard in Marion, Mass today, and we're doing the new Zipwick Pro Series upgrade on Carina. 33 Surf Hunter, beautiful boat, outfitted with a pair of 750 millimeter Series S interceptors. With the new Zipwick Pro Series, not only are you gonna get that five times the speed and new active pitch, but we're also offering upgrade kits for all the existing standard Series E and Series S systems. So if you've got a system in the field, uh, you're gonna be able to take advantage of these uh, new features by simply getting an upgrade kit. And what you're gonna get in your kit, depending on how many servers you have, we have a dual and a quad. Uh, you're gonna get new servos. Uh, the new servos are upgraded with more stainless steel components, updated drive shafts to be able to handle that extra load and faster speed. And then you're gonna also need to replace your distribution unit. So um, pretty straightforward. You know, you can leave your existing power feeds in the boat, all your CAN bus cable that runs up to the helm. Um, for existing systems, you're gonna be able to utilize that same control panel you had. You're just gonna do a firmware update and your system's gonna be off and running. So uh, we'll have these upgrade, upgrade kits available for Pro. Gonna be substantially less cost than, than buying a new Pro system for you guys. And a really nice update for all your existing Zipwork users. First step of the upgrade, really simple. You're gonna remove those front plates. And we're gonna replace the servos first. Good tip here when you're doing your upgrade, if your boat lives in the water, it's coming out. You can see here, a little bit dirty here. It's probably, uh, three months of in the water in the Northeast and in pretty cold water, but you do get some growth in there. So uh, you wanna make sure you, while you have these off, we're gonna power wash and clean all the internals and make sure that auto clean is, is on. So now we're gonna replace the servos. You're gonna put some 4200 equivalent sealant on your through hole penetration. You have an O-ring there as backup, but we wanna make sure we put a sealant on that stem as well. Uh, on the backhand side of the servo, you can see here there's a sticker. What I like to do uh, when I'm installing is I actually take the sticker off and I put it right on the right on the transom above the interceptor when I'm installing it. And that's gonna tell you two pretty critical things. You're gonna have, uh, you can see the blue side needs to be all the way in the right position. See how it was all the way left, it needs to be all the way to the right. And then uh, it also mentions the spec for the torque rating on the servo screws. The three servo screws are at two newton meters and that's really critical. So make sure that slide is all the way to the right and pay attention to those torque uh, settings on your three fasteners when you get the servo in. Um, this is a out the back through hole installation so we're gonna run our wire through here and then there's a little channel behind the servo that you need to make sure your servo cable is perfectly lined up in there so you're gonna slide that through all right just like that all right and then you're gonna run that servo down in there and make sure that carrier is perfectly slotted there with the back plate, the drive shaft, and everything should fit nice and smooth, okay? Any binding up there or, or it doesn't feel right, that's not fitting right, your carrier is probably in the wrong position or your cable is bound up. So you wanna make sure that's nice and smooth. So what you're gonna wanna do is, um, you're gonna wanna use your torque wrench. This is a T-handle torque wrench. This is actually for uh, road bikes, for racing, for carbon bikes. Um, it's actually really simple. It just goes to really low um, newton meter values. A lot of torque wrenches don't go down as far as two newton meters, which is really light. This is a nice tool that we sell at IMTRA. Um, you can also find these anywhere on, on the internet, but we offer these at IMTRA as well if you want one to, for installations. Uh, really simple. We're gonna put our three servo screws in. What I like to do is just slowly bring these down and seat them on the shoulder of the servo, just nice and gently, okay? I like to rotate, I go to the right and then I come back and then I do the two left ones. As we tighten that down, we kind of just want to hold it snug to the back plate, make sure it's seating properly, evenly balanced. Put our third one in. Okay. And what I got here is we're set to five newton meters. Uh, that would be for the front plate, so we want to make sure we drop down the servo down to two newton meters, so just, just rotate it down to two. And we're at two. And we're gonna come back in here and we're gonna fasten them down until that clicks. And we're gonna do that for three to three fasteners there and we're good to go. Just one thing I wanna point out here, a lot of times if you get a new install and you get an E128 error and an interceptor stuck, when we see uh, the servo installed wrong and this drive shaft is not slotted with the worm gear properly, it's usually on the starboard side because gravity can really just pull that slide to the wrong side opposed to the port side where it drops into the right position. So really just pay attention to that position of that, uh, of that uh, drive shaft there all the way to the right hand side. And we're gonna install our servo, make sure everything's slotted up just like the last one we did. 
slide that in, make sure it's lined up, and everything should be nice and smooth. There you have it. So as I mentioned before, we got our front plates out, we just power washed them in and it's squeaky clean. You want to make sure the blade is in the up position every time you install, uh, install them, so up position, okay? And it's going to slot right over, it should be nice and smooth. If you're forcing it on and it doesn't want to go on in the up position, that means your servo is most likely not in the 0% uh, position, so you need to make sure the servos are all the way in the up position. So the second step is swapping out your distribution unit. We got the old one here. We've cut the power negative feeds. We've taken our old servos out of there, and we've also removed our IBUS in, IBUS out. That runs up to your your helm. Um, we're gonna disconnect that. We're gonna use that to plug back into our new distribution unit. Our new distribution is here. This is the Pro distribution unit. And you can see it's got a little bit different look, slightly larger profile, but your screw pattern is identical. It should fit right up on your old screws. Um, you're just gonna have to kind of reconnect to your positive and negative feed. There is now a built-in fuse, resettable fuse internally, unlike the old distribution unit that had a, a push style fuse, uh, just a standard fuse in there under the waterproof cap. Now it's an internal resetting fuse, so that's the only change there, but this is the new unit that you'll have to put in. So really important when you're seating down these servos, there's O-rings in these connectors and you want to make sure they're not cross-threaded and those connectors are nice and tight and seated down properly so those O-rings get just a little bit compressed to make them watertight. We're going to clean up the engine room here, zip tie everything up nice and clean. We just connected a power here, made some new connections on the positive and negative feed, very simple. We're able to utilize those existing fasteners in the bulkhead, just loosen them up, put them in there and click them back down and uh, we're almost ready to go here with the Pro Update. Just finished up down here at Burr Brothers. We just did a full pro upgrade here. A pair of servos, distribution, and a software update. Took about two hours flat to do the whole job. Really quick and easy install. Uh, stay tuned for more when we get on the water.